We've all heard that Earth's climate is changing, but how exactly will it change in the next 20, 50, 100 years? Climate scientists know that recent extreme weather events, like flooding, droughts, and wildfires, are very likely exacerbated by anthropogenic or human-induced climate change. But how can we predict what Earth's future climate will be like if the changes we're experiencing today are unprecedented in the course of human history? We have to peer into Earth's past to find examples of how our climate may change in the future. My research reconstructs Earth's ancient climate, specifically from three million years ago when the Earth was much warmer than it is today. And this provides possible guidelines for Earth's climate state by the end of the 21st century. I focus on the tropical Pacific Ocean, where there are currently large differences in one, the temperature of water at the surface of the ocean, and two, the productivity of that surface water. And by productivity, I mean the abundance and activity of primary producers, or tiny algae that live at the surface and photosynthesize, or take energy from the sun to grow. The tropical Pacific is also home to a climate cycle called El Nino, which disrupts these patterns of productivity and temperature and contributes to the devastation of extreme weather events that affect people on either side of the Pacific. My research is the first time anyone has looked at multiple sites across the Pacific to try to figure out if El Nino events were more common three million years ago and whether we're heading that way again in the near future. But how do I actually reconstruct climate conditions from millions of years in the past? Well, I use sediment from the bottom of the ocean as physical records of Earth's climate history. A research vessel traveled to the middle of the Pacific Ocean and drilled through hundreds of meters of mud on the seafloor to retrieve a sediment core. Because sediment is continuously deposited layer by layer on the ocean floor, I can construct a timeline with clues about Earth's ancient climate. Within the sediment core, I am on the lookout for organic molecules and fossilized skeletons that can tell me this story about the past. These skeletons and molecules are produced by phytoplankton, so single-celled organisms that live at the ocean surface and record the surrounding climate conditions from the time they were alive. For example, one phytoplankton I study produces a molecule that looks slightly different in warmer versus colder waters. I also find a greater amount of this molecule when surface productivity is high, so I can map out past trends in productivity and temperature based on the ratio and abundance of these molecules. Although living phytoplankton are found at the surface of the ocean, when they die, they sink to the seafloor, and their molecules and skeletons are preserved in the sediment that I then study. I can use these biological clues to reconstruct past temperature and productivity trends to try to evaluate whether El Nino conditions were dominant three million years ago. My research suggests that even though the tropical Pacific was significantly warmer in the past, primary productivity was relatively high, and that's completely different from modern El Nino events, where warm water accompanies a crash in productivity off the coast of South America. Climate scientists still don't have a good sense of how El Nino cycles will respond to anthropogenic or human-induced global warming but my research fills in gaps in these predictions. My results suggest that even though droughts and flooding may become more severe in the coming decades, the productivity story is much more complex because warm water may be able to support thriving phytoplankton and fish communities. In conclusion, by reconstructing Earth's past climate, I am able to inform predictions for what Earth's climate may look like by the end of this century. Thank you.